As Nigeria begins the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines, the federal government is putting steps in place to ensure that the vaccines don't end up in the wrong hands. Health Minister Dr. Alon Nimbe Mamora says all vaccines arriving in the country must come in through the Namdi Azikwe airport in, the, in Abuja and any other routes will be legal. That is bringing the 3.9 million Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines from the COVAX initiative has just touched down here at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport. And this is an exclusive on Arise News because there's no any other media house that is covering this live. Others are just getting shot, but we can tell you that that is the plane that is currently taxiing right now. So the vaccines are here. It's been just over a year since Nigeria recorded its first case of the coronavirus. But Tuesday marks a happier milestone. The first vaccines, which were supposed to arrive in January, have finally arrived. But now that they are here, there are some concerns about whether people will take them. Nigeria's information minister says work has been done to ensure that the shots are accepted by the community. We're expecting about 60 million doses from uh, COVAX. Uh, we have about just about 4 million today. Now, I, I want to take the opportunity to again reiterate that if these vaccines were not safe, we would not touch them. We have enlisted the support of traditional rulers, governors, political elites, and everybody to please promote this vaccine and convince Nigeria that this vaccine is not safe, we will not bring them. And we are going to live by examples. It had been predicted that Nigeria would suffer a high number of deaths from the pandemic. But the fatality rate in the country is less than 2%. Over 1,900 people have so far died from the virus. Nigerians have been reassured that vaccines are safe and would lower this rate even more. I want to assure Nigerians that uh, this has been the border for all of us that are in the uh, health, uh, health uh, industry of this country. An effort is already being made to handle this. You know, uh, at least I, I can assure you that down to the states, we have cold chain. You know, in some selected local government areas, you also have. So what we are going to do is that the areas where we have the cold chain down to the state and local government, we will put them there and move people to that place. There have been concerns about Nigeria's capacity to store the vaccines at the required temperatures. But officials say that everything is now in place. There's no shadow of that uh, that Mr. President and uh, the Vice President will be taking the vaccines. Uh, we're trying to uh, schedule that. Potentially this will be Saturday. Uh, once we get confirmation uh, based on their schedules, we've been able to procure uh, enough coaching equipment that will ensure that every single political ward in Nigeria has the solar direct drive uh, refrigerator uh, which can uh, store this AstraZeneca vaccines are within plus two to plus eight degrees uh, Celsius. The arrival of the vaccines have brought hope for many, but this first batch is only enough to inoculate 1% of Nigeria's population. Or people are being urged to stick with restrictions to stop the virus from spreading. Don't congregate in large numbers because those massive events are super spreaders. And as much as possible, except it is very expedient, don't travel. The vaccines might be here now, but injections aren't expected to start until Saturday when the rollout will be kicked off with government leaders and health workers. It's hoped that 70% of the population will be inoculated by the end of next year. Amaka Uday, Arash News, Abuja. All right, for more on this, we have the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Olorin Nimbe Mamura. He's joining us uh, on Newsnight. Thank you so much for uh, your time. I can imagine that it's been a very, very uh, busy day for you. Let's start with this basic question that people are asking, because that seems to be uh, a challenge that is emerging, even globally. How do you ensure that these vaccines, now that they are here in Nigeria, you know, don't become a VIP vaccine. One point, yeah, about 3.9 million uh, vaccines uh, already uh, taken delivery of. How do you ensure that this does not become a VIP vaccine? Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, to start with, what we have just received today um, is just an advance, if you like, 
okay. you know, something to start with. Um, about 4 million doses, 3.924 thereabout. So it's just to start with. And um, even we have all the vaccines we need, we cannot administer them in one, well, in one fell swoop. So it's going, it's going to be a gradual process. And that's why, again, we have prioritized the administration of these vaccines. And when we say we have prioritized, mm -hmm. we're starting with um, the health workers, frontline okay. health workers. And um, these are not just the professionals in the health uh, industry, but even the cleaners who work in such uh, frontline uh, positions, they will be taken care of as well. Then we'll move on to what we call the a strategic leadership. Which is? Of course, I mean, you at all levels. Mr. President is the number one man, he's the, he, he's the number one strategic leader of this country. Are we going to see him take the job? Oh, yes, yes, okay. because that will, that, will, that, that will lend credence to the safety of, of the vaccine. Of course, the governors, the top ranking government officials, these are you know, strategic people in terms of leadership. Then, of course, we we'll look at the, the, the elderly ones who are more vulnerable, and particularly those with uh, what we call uh, comorbidities or uh, existing ailments like um, hypertension, diabetes, uh, long chronic lung disease, liver disease, kidney disease, and all that. These are chronic uh, uh, cases that uh, they are more vulnerable or people who uh, on, uh, maybe have uh, cancer and all that. Okay. So these are people that we need to take okay. care of. Um, we, uh, we understand that the federal government is indicating that people below 18 are not that vulnerable. Why are they considered not vulnerable enough to be deserving of vaccine? And also, while we are on it, you're part of the strategic leadership. Are we expecting to see you on Arise News uh, <laughs> taking your vaccine anytime of soon? Of course, <laughs> I will take my own vaccine. <laughs> okay. Now, but back to the, of course, I will take, I will take the vaccine okay. because it's, you know, it's the right thing to do. Let's get it clear. Okay. When you have a pandemic of this nature, the ultimate is vaccine. Okay. And that's why it's not happening here alone. It's a global thing. Okay, so the 18 year old, why the 18 not? year old, one of the reasons yeah. is the fact that uh, first, these are vaccines produced under emergency situation. In fact, there is no single vaccine that is being administered right now, that is COVID 19 vaccine, that is not being administered under emergency use authorization. You see, now, what that means is that some measure of uh, protection has been established with these vaccines. That is, okay. you take it, you, are to be you, 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 be, you will be protected to a large extent. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of fatality, or in terms protect, of protecting, in terms uh, of contracting uh, if, it, if you have, if you have, the virus, if you catch the virus. It is not likely to kill you. If you take the vaccine. Yes, that is. As opposed to case. the chances of dying from it mm. being high up there when you don't have any or you've not had any Actually, vaccine at yeah. all. Now, under 18, because the, 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 the vaccine has not been put through the whole process of observing what will happen, so you cannot, you don't want to take, it's just like a pregnancy, I mean, women in pregnancy as well. Mm -hmm. So you need to weigh what we call the therapeutic advantage against the possible, yeah. um, you know, uh, side effects. Yeah. So okay. now, secondly, in that age group, they are still vibrant, the immunity is still very strong mm -hmm. to withstand, you know, whatever. So it's better to just play safe and allow them to overcome. And if you see the, the, the deaths recorded, uh, you have not seen much of deaths in that age group. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, uh, a good point that you've made there. But let's, 
uh, talk about another concern that Nigerians have, whether the vaccines will be made mandatory or voluntary. <laughs> no, Is no, government no, considering no, that? Nothing will be made man mandatory. You know, it's optional. It's optional. The choice is yours. Nobody will be forced to take any vaccine. Are you saying for now or further down the line, now, we will now. not come to a time when every Nigerian will be made, you know, to forcefully take the vaccine? If that happens, yeah. it will not be a decision of Nigeria. You may get to a situation where the countries now start to say that if you don't have a vaccination certificate, like you have the yellow card. Mm. There are countries that you cannot travel to without the yellow card. So it may come to that. And it, it, it's just, if you like, call it enlightened self-interest. Why, why should I allow you in my country to bring a deadly virus into the country? So I have a right to protect myself. So, will the so if I say that, if you don't have evidence, mm of this vaccination don't come into my country. So it may just okay. be something that will become global. So it will not be the Nigerian government mandating, uh, mandating Nigerians to do it. It will just be a case of, look, this has become mandatory yeah. because if you want exactly. to go outside the country. So yes. now the next question will now be that with 3.94 million uh, vaccine in Nigeria, everything came to Abuja. What's going to be your distribution plan? Why, why is some of it 50% to Lagos, 50% to Abuja? I just told you that this is just an advance. We, okay. we need more than that that, that will still come. Okay. But they won't be okay. now. It's not going to be a centralized process. It cannot be. Down the line. Very, it very good. Be. It cannot be. It has to go to the states as well. Okay. But there are parameters for distributing to the states when the vaccines you know, uh, become readily available. What is the preparedness level of the states now as we speak? That is one of the things that will come into play. That is when we have the vaccines. It, the rollout for now, I told you, the frontline health workers, the um, strategic leadership, mm -hmm. the elderly, people with comorbidities and all that. That's, now, when you move into that uh, so the states, which is the, 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 the first phase of the rollout itself, in each state, the lead agency, which is the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, has already identified the people that constitute strategic leadership in the states. And of course, the health workers who are the front line in okay. this, they already uh, identified. Let's take a quick break, sir. We'll take a quick break when we I come back. Uh, we'll take a couple of questions. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation with Dr. Lauren Nimbe Mamora, the Minister of State for Health. All right, welcome back. You're watching News Night. Our guest is Dr. Lauren, Be uh, Lauren Ibe Mamura, uh, Minister of State for Health. Uh, before we went on that break, you were making a point, but because we don't have much time, uh, double bio question. Uh, what are the long-term plans in terms of getting the vaccines, you know, uh, available, readily available to Nigerians? Are we always going to in, uh, rely on India and other countries? And then again, uh, do you, we know all we need to know about these vaccines in terms of efficacy and long-term impact or effect? Now, let me correct that. We're not relying on India. We are relying on our, what you can call, multilateral negotiation through facilities. The first is the COVAX. COVAX facility is something that has been put together by the GAVI, which is the Global Vaccine Alliance, and WHO. Yes, we do okay? that. Okay? Yeah. So it's a global thing. Mm -hmm. It's just that the vaccines we're getting, you know, have been routed through India, not from India that we're getting it. Okay. Now, the second one, multilateral facility again, is the AVAT. AVAT is African Vaccine Acquisition Tax Team, which again is being put, has been put together by African Union. And the whole essence is, you know, you know, being stronger when you are together mm -hmm. and you can negotiate better. And then, of course, you have access and then you also have equity in this vaccine. So that's the whole essence. My question simply is, yeah. will these vaccines be produced in Nigeria? Anytime soon? Not, uh, not it's pro okay. pro produce, producing right. or manufacturing in Nigeria cannot be. 
cannot as be as, anytime uh, soon okay. because it's a whole lot of processes involved. involved. Okay, yeah, so the final, question and all that. Will then, the final question will then be that you mentioned AVAX, which is the AU, you've mentioned COVAX. Has Nigeria got any plan to put some money down to buy some for us and say, just like South Africa did, this is ours. We take, we're taking 10 million or 20 million or 30 million. Mm. Is that in the plan? The money is already there. We, you see, the, 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 the African Zim Bank is the bank that is there for us and they were like guaranteeing. So they can get these baskets for us and then we'll pay later. That is the arrangement. And we have account with them. All those who want to help us, cal COVID and all that, they will just pay money to their account. And whatever we also uh, put for us, yeah, exactly. federal government of Nigeria will be paid into that. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister of State for Health and uh, Dr. Mamora. We thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much for inviting me.